Okay, so a little project that I want to do. Uh, I want to make something for my daughter for her Christmas birthday stuff that's coming up. Uh, she's looking to get into doing a little bit of YouTube stuff as well uh, for a, a cooking program that she wants to do. Uh, so she wants to use her iPhone to do the video work with. Uh, so I wanted to make uh, a holder for her phone to mount the phone on a tripod like this one here. Uh, so it can be mounted on there and be secure, hold it in a position that it's not going to jiggle around and she can aim it with using the tripod as it should be, you know, everything will be steady. Uh, so what I'm thinking of doing, I've got some aluminum stock here. I was going to use this for another project. That's going to be delayed a little while. I'm still developing that, that project. Uh, so I'm going to cut this in half and uh, I want to set this up to thread it so it'll mount on there. And uh, probably going to have some plastic pieces that I print up on the 3D printer that will slide uh, across this, one on either end, uh, that just grab the corners of the phone and then the other half will sit on top of the phone up here and again have another two plastic pieces that just hold the corners and leave a little gap so the buttons don't hit against it and uh, then what I'm going to do how I'm going to mount that is I'm going to take this and I want to mill in grooves on either side. Uh, dropping down about four millimeters down from the top edge and making the groove about four millimeters uh, in thickness. And uh, the plastic will have a little key that inserts in there and grabs it. So it just you can slide it back and forth in here to adjust the width of the foam. Uh, and then as far as the height for the top to the bottom, I'm going to drill a hole on either end and use a quarter inch rod like this uh, and we'll set it in with set screws. That should pretty much do it. Uh, it's a pretty simple project. The, I, the biggest part I think is going to be designing the plastic pieces to fit right in there and hold the foam properly. Uh, we're going we're to cut this, drill a couple of holes. Uh, I got to thread the bottom so it can be attached and we got to mill out the, uh, the grooves on either side and I think that will pretty much do it. So right now I've got a little gap. I'm going to bring it back and uh, we'll just move the table until we get that up to zero. Use that as a starting point. And I'm going to use the power here to move that. Surprisingly, end to end, it seems to be pretty much right on the mark, uh, but there's a variation in the middle there. Uh, I don't know if it's uh, thickness in there. I, I actually kind of suspect it's more movement of the table uh, from what I'm seeing. I may have to tighten the gids on this. As you know, I'm still going over this machine. Uh, yeah, we're talking about a couple of hundredths of uh, a millimeter, so it's really not that much. Uh, but I'd like to see it steadier than what I'm seeing there. Now, it could just be imperfections on the surface here that's doing it, but I don't think that it's going to be that much that I'd see that kind of movement on there.
Uh, but I think her alignment's actually surprisingly good. I didn't have to adjust anything there. Uh, from one end to the other, it ends up about the same, and the little dips in there seem to average out in the middle. Uh, so I, I think we're good to go to the next step. So this bar has been kicking around for a while. Uh, I got a little bit of chew on the end here. Uh, I'm going to try and eliminate this. I, I need 19 inches. Uh, and this is 19 and a half. So it'll be just if I cut this in, it'll be just enough to clear that chew off over there. There'll be some minor stuff. Uh, most of this we can sand out, or uh, I may just mill a little on the surface. The other end here, uh, I because I was using this for something else originally, and I had done a test run of cutting here. This was on the uh, my homemade mill. Uh, I was just checking to see what I could do with it, and uh, I'm going to have to incorporate this into the design because uh, I don't have enough material to eliminate that end. Uh, I think I can work around it. I'll just make it into a de decorative groove that runs along, and probably put it on the bottom. Uh, maybe do one on both sides. I'll just extend this out. Uh, but it, that's something I got to take into consideration. It's kind of in the way, but uh, I'm going to have to work around it.
So with that uh, low quality inverter that I mentioned earlier, uh, I have to let the, uh, the spindle warm up before I can bring it up to full speed. So right now I've got it turning at uh, 700 RPM. I'm, with this little bit, I'm going to run, run this uh, at the full 1500. Uh, it won't go there right now, it will stall because the grease is cold in the gears. So I'm going to let it run about 15-20 minutes to warm up. Uh, and then it will be able to run the full speed. It's quite cold in the shop here right now. Uh, so in the meantime, I'm just going to get everything lined up and ready to go. At the moment, I don't have a DRO installed yet. It's here, but it needs to be installed. So I'm using a dial indicator from the table to the base. And uh, I've already zeroed to the work. So now I'm going to get this zeroed out. Uh, if you notice, this has two indicators on here. One is for metric and one is for uh, standard inch sizes. Uh, I picked this up. I work with both. So I figured I'd try it out. Seems to work okay. Uh, right now it's a little sluggish because it's cold, uh, but it is working. So I've got that zeroed out, and now I need to move in the correct amount. set my Z so I'm just touched off on it. Okay, so as soon as I can bring the RPM up, uh, I'm going to raise the table. Uh, I think I'm going to go in a depth of four millimeters as well, and uh, then we'll be ready to feed it in. And I'm probably going to move this probably about two inches per minute. Uh, I get to I get to see how it reacts. Okay, so I've got the spindle warmed up and I believe we're ready to go, so let's try this out.
Looks like it's doing it pretty good. Could be getting a little bit of fusing going on there. I'm probably pushing this a little bit. So what I didn't think about at the time is that I'm using the wrong type of bit for aluminum. This is a four flute with a coating, and really it should be a two flute with no coating at all, preferably high speed steel. Now this is only a four millimeter bit. Uh, Ideally, it should be spinning a lot faster than this, and this is why I'm going to still hold on to the uh, the homemade mill because that one goes up to 6,000 RPM. It's really this kind of cut is actually better off on the, on my uh, home built mill. Uh, but I want to run this right now. I want to see how it works. So. I'm doing it here, and uh, this is really the first real project I'm doing on this. Okay, and I made a little miscalculation here. I've run out of table room. Uh, I've got a little left here, but not enough to get to the end, so I'm going to have to shuffle this and continue. In the meantime, this scrapes out, but kind of hard, so I'm going to back up and uh, see if I can clear that out with a second pass, and then I'll readjust and go over this again and get that last bit. Get a little bit of furs on the top, but it's there. Clean this up that better later, but I just want to get an idea of what we got. It's a little rough, but uh, I think most of that's just because it's just not fast enough for the small bit. And uh, okay, so I'm going to move this down a little bit. And we should be able to do this without changing uh, the rest of the positions and we'll finish this cut up.
bird's not really doing anything to help clear it, so I'm gonna let it run and we'll just double back after. Sorry about the camera moving. It got caught on the uh, the hand wheel here. Pulled it in. I think he's still in view though. I'll check after. Okay, so we got our first run of it, and uh, I'm gonna finish this project up later because it's getting late. But uh, well, we got a little example of it. And here is a close up of doing the second side. So this completes our two channels and uh, I mean it's, it's a little rough cut because I, the RPM is low but uh, definitely adequate for what I'm doing here. Uh, everything seems straight enough. You just could use a little more RPM on it. Either that or a slower feed rate but I really don't want to bring it down to less than an inch a minute. This should just take forever to try and do this. Okay, so uh, now I'm cutting out that decorative uh, notch on the side. I'm using a uh, 12 millimeter uh, blue nano.
probably could cut this a fair bit faster, but uh, I would sacrifice the finish if I did that. Right now it's looking pretty good. I think I want to leave it right where it is. And this is the same cutting operation, but on the other bar. So this is what I've come up with uh, for the slider. And uh, let me get clicked in here. So these will ride in the notches and this will go over the aluminum square and then the other part back here, you continue around here using a space mouse here to control this. Uh, so that V notch will be what holds the corner of the phone. And I did it with a V notch so that it's kind of somewhat universal it should fit a, a wide variety of phones in here uh, the biggest concern I may have is the iPhone the camera is really almost right in the corner so I may have to do a d different type of slider uh, for the iPhone uh, on the corner where the camera is maybe just a part that runs on the rail and has one side coming up and not the top part up here uh, so we can clear the camera lens which uh, the inset into the notch may have a clearance issue here uh, either that or if I can do one with a, a more open front and maybe just a little bit back here uh, I gotta try it out and fit it, see how it goes. Uh, the Space Mouse, it's a 3D controller. Uh, it's a very sensitive device. You only move this a tiny bit. A lot of these uh, get broken by people who don't know how to use them and think you just go and twist it hard. You don't. Uh, 
Uh, it just takes very gentle pressure. You just go to one side. You don't actually turn it. You just kind of put a little twisting force on it. Rotation, you can tip it forward, back, pull it up, down. It does transitions left, right, towards you. Yeah, let's see if I can show some of the movement here going away. That's twisting. Twist to the right, twist to the left. I can rotate to the left and right. It, it, it does it, any motion that you can do in 3D. This will replicate it. And the uh, the buttons here are all programmable. So uh, in the CAD program I use here, I use FreeCAD. As so we can get the focus here. Uh, I program it for a lot of the hotkeys on here. Uh, so a lot of my functions, I, I can just reach with my left hand and uh, trigger the different uh, features that I use. And then with my right hand, I use the mouse, which controls the pointer. So I got the first of the plastic parts printed up. Uh, this is a draft. I may actually use this, uh, but it, it fits up perfect on the rail. Uh, real happy with the way that came out. Uh, I don't think I need to make any adjustments there. Uh, and it fits uh, at least uh, the couple phones that I have on hand. It fits in the notch good. It looks like it should hold it steady. The only issue is what I mentioned uh, when I showed the drawing for this is I think on the Apple the camera is going to end up uh, probably right about where this notch is but because you have a, a cone of vision that comes out of it that's going to be coming out like that it's probably this is going to interfere with the view. So I'm going to have to do something here. I don't know if I'm going to do a, a different design for this corner that's maybe two parts or what I may do is cut a circle here that has like a, a cone to it that would follow. Uh, uh, sort of like, uh, like a count, like coming at this with a counter sink. If this was metal, if I came in with a countersink and just bored a countersink uh, with the center of it right there, uh, it might work. I got to try it out, uh, see what works. But I think it's coming along. I think we got something to work with here. For the other three corners, this is no problem. It should work perfect for the other three corners. Okay, so I got it finished last night. Uh, I didn't film all the details of the ending because it was pretty simple. Uh, it was just finishing these two rods here, uh, which it amounted to facing each end and doing a little chamfer on here and hitting it with scotch brake. Nothing worth actually uh, showing on there. But I wanted to show the finished product, so we're going to mount it up here. And I still got to clean this tripod. This is the one that she's probably going to get. Okay, so that's mounted on the tripod. Now I don't have an iPhone here. I got to use mine, but. Uh, same idea. Now this is the, the uh, corner that's cut out for the iPhone eye, and I'm not sure if it should be on the top or the bottom, uh, but that's easily changed. It just slides off the end. So let's open this up. And, uh, this should already be sized for my phone. That just goes in there like that, squeeze everything down and tighten the set screws on the back a little. And that's basically it right there. So now we've got full control and that phone is in there tight. Uh, 
once you lock this in it's going to stay put and it is heavy enough that it, if you tap it you're not going to get a lot of vibration it'll stay pretty good but this should fit the iphone as well and a lot of other phones so this is what i got and uh i also made one extra one of these like this really with my phone it would be better to use this one up here uh but she's going to be using it with her iphone so i've got that one in but she'll, i'm going to give this to her as well so if she ends up getting a different phone in the future she'll have it yeah let's we're going to show the other side It does take a little something to reach in here to hit my power button. I think with the iPhone, their power button's a little more accessible, but... Let me just log in here on that. Yeah. So there's with the camera. And with the phone, you know, that's a nice good view. It's actually a lot better than a lot of DSLs are, have with using the little screen on them. Uh, so, I think this is going to work well. If you've made it this far, I hope you've enjoyed watching this video and found it entertaining or educational. If so, please consider hitting like or subscribe. It does help give me incentive to continue producing more. Thank you.